Welcome to the Science Cinema Series. This is a series of videos I have put together in order to help you understand some of the basic concepts you'll come across in your science courses. Now this is the first in the series and what we'll be looking at is the concept of pH. First we'll talk about what is pH after all, then we'll look at how do we measure pH, how is it determined, and finally I'll show you a pH demonstration to help you further understand exactly what's going on with this phenomenon that we refer to as pH. Now you might ask yourself, what exactly does pH stand for? Well, there's some, uh, there's some argument as to what exactly pH represents, but it's either the potential of hydrogen or the power of hydrogen. Now, what are we referring to? Well, the easiest way to understand pH is to think of a water molecule. Think of a water molecule and how a water molecule disassociates or rather comes apart. When you look at a water molecule, you can see that it has two hydrogens, which are bonded, two hydrogen atoms, which are bonded to an oxygen atom, H2O. Now when water comes apart, one hydrogen will separate off of the water molecule, leaving behind a hydroxide. So we have an OH, oxygen and hydrogen bonded together, which carries a negative charge, and then we have a hydrogen ion which carries a positive charge. So we have our hydroxide and our hydrogen. This is how water disassociates or comes apart. Now notice, it's a one to one ratio. Now I said pH refers to the, the power or potential of hydrogen, which is the concentration of hydrogens in a water-based or aqueous solution. So say I have a solution which is water-based and I want to know basically how many hydrogen ions are in that solution. Now if it's pure water, distilled water, you have a one-to-one -one ratio. For every one hydrogen ion you have, you have one hydroxide ion. So we call that neutral or balanced. But then you can also have a situation where Let's say you have additional hydrogen ions that are added to your solution. So all of a sudden, now I have a three to one ratio. So I have my hydroxides, and my hydroxide, my single hydroxide, but I have my three hydrogen ions, three to one ratio. Now it has become hydrogen rich. So if you think like a scale, it's heavy on the hydrogen side. Well, this is where we start referring to an acid. So it went from being a balanced solution, one to one, to becoming more hydrogen rich on the other side. And so now, if I can find my hydrogen ion, okay. And now it is heavy on the hydrogen side. So it is becoming acidic. Conversely, it could go the other direction. Let's say that I have Okay, I'm back to neutral. I have my one-to-one -one ratio. I have an equal number of hydroxides and hydrogens. And something changes to add hydroxides to the solution. Or let's say that I simply lose some hydrogens. So all of a sudden, I'm dealing with a solution which is very hydroxide rich. So Okay, let's say in this situation, I have three hydroxides, three to one ratio. I have way more hydroxides than I have hydrogens. So now I'm heavy on the hydroxide side. So now back to that scale comparison. So I'm heavy on the hydroxide side. So now this is where I'm talking about a basic or alkaline solution. So my pH has shifted. Okay, so we can have a basic solution, we can have one-to-one, -one, a neutral solution, or we can have a hydrogen-enriched acidic solution. So this is what we're talking about when we look at pH. 
Now, let's look at how we actually measure pH and the pH scale that we use to determine just how many hydrogen ions we do have or just how many hydroxide ions we have. So that will be the next thing that uh, we take a look at.